How to auto scale your apps running in Kubernetes? What are the different aspects you need to consider? And is it possible to scale down to zero? Let's find out. Hey guys, it's me, your tech bird, and in this video, we'll explore the event driven way of auto scaling microservices. Just to be clear, I'm assuming you already know the basics of auto scaling. You know, things like scaling up versus scaling out. I won't be covering that today. In this video, I intend to dive deeper into the mechanics of horizontal pod auto scaling and explore some new techniques we all can use. We already know that in Kubernetes, the horizontal pod auto scaler is responsible to auto scale our apps. This is how a fully sketched out version of an HPA object looks like. Let's break it down. There are six fundamental controls one must remember when it comes to auto scaling. The first one is actually a no brainer. We need to start by selecting the target we want to autoscale. This is mostly a deployment or a stateful set. This can also be an Argo rollout object we saw when we spoke about Canary deployments. The second one is selecting the minimum and maximum replica count for your services. Getting this right is kinda important. For a client-facing service, you'd want to keep the minimum replicas around three to make sure you always have them up whenever there is an incoming request. This also makes sure that we can absorb any transient spikes when multiple end users decide to use our application at the exact same time. On the other hand, you would want to set the minimum replicas to one or even zero for background services to reduce the infrastructure costs when no real work is happening. The third control is pretty straightforward as well. In order to achieve auto scaling, we need to decide the metrics we want to auto scale on. For example, Choosing memory as a metric for scaling JVM-based apps would be a terrible idea. JVM ends up hogging as much memory as it can during the startup process. This is kind of like an optimization step. A better metric to use for this use case would be the heap size. Unfortunately, Kubernetes doesn't give us a lot of metrics to choose from out of the box. We are just stuck with the total CPU and memory utilizations, which I don't think anyone should use. There are ways to add custom metrics, but for most of us, that's just a lot of unnecessary effort. And it doesn't end at choosing the right metric. You also need to configure a threshold beyond which you want to trigger auto scaling. Think of the threshold as the healthy baseline you want Kubernetes to maintain at any given point of time. If the utilization goes above this threshold or drops below it, Kubernetes will add or remove pods to maintain equilibrium. Okay. The next three controls are going to be a little more intense, so let's gear up. The fourth control is the evaluation period and algorithm. The evaluation period is more about controlling when the decision to auto scale will happen. This is usually around 15 seconds and is configured as a flag while starting Kubernetes. The evaluation algorithm looks something like this. Notice that the current replica count is used as a multiplier here. So if the current count was zero, our application would be stuck at zero replicas forever. What this means is that HPA does not allow for scaling down to zero. The fifth control is deciding the scale up and down policy. Now, most of us tend to overlook this, but in my experience, incorrect scaling policy is often the root cause of a lot of auto scaling related problems. Scaling policies control the rate at which replicas are added and removed. Here's a tip on how you can get this right. You want to slow down the auto scaling process when your incoming load is really spiky. The thing is, adding and removing replicas in Kubernetes takes time. When the load on your services is changing rapidly, Kubernetes won't be able to keep up with it. So by the time it can add new replicas, the load could be gone. So you basically want to keep your replica count at the lowest possible point where they can absorb incoming spikes as and when they arrive. The final control you get is called the stabilization window. This is also something you want to look into if your load pattern is spiky. The idea is to hold on to the max computed replica count for a set period of time to prevent replicas from getting added and removed constantly. This way, you can have a stable number of replicas even though the load isn't. Based on what we just discussed, there are two major problems with the horizontal pod autoscaler. The first one is the limited choice of default metrics you can use and the difficulty in adding new ones. This is my major complaint with Kubernetes. 
Scaling based on CPU and memory isn't just old school, but it also won't work in today's microservice architectures. Imagine you have a microservice which communicates via a messaging broker. In such a scenario, we most likely will limit the number of events or messages our service can process simultaneously. As a result of this, we are indirectly limiting the CPU utilization. Even if you are using RESTful APIs, you will most likely use a rate limiter to prevent overloading your services. This leads to the exact same problem. What I'm trying to say is, most modern strategies for maintaining a good quality of service prevent CPU and memory utilization from skyrocketing. This makes scaling based on CPU and memory incorrect. A better alternative would be to use metrics like the pending message queue size or the number of incoming requests. These metrics represent the actual load way more accurately than something like CPU or memory. The other problem with HPA is the inability to scale down to zero. And if you think about it, using the metrics I just spoke about earlier kind of help us solve this problem as well. Just hear me out. Let's take the previous example of communicating via an event broker. A broker will hold on to messages even if all its consumers have scaled down to zero. Once we detect the broker has some pending messages in its queue, we can go ahead and spin up a single consumer. If we look at the auto-scaling algorithm, the problem exists only as long as the current replica count is zero. But as soon as we start a single replica, the HPA action kicks in and takes care of scaling from 1 to n. What I'm trying to say is, to achieve scaling down to 0, we simply need to write some code to handle scaling from 0 to 1 and vice versa. We can continue to use the HPA to scale from 1 to n and back. Guess what? This additional piece of code I'm talking about already exists and is fully open source. I'm talking about Kada. Kada literally stands for Kubernetes Event-Driven Autoscaling and it was built with a single purpose in mind to improve autoscaling in Kubernetes. Kada has support for more than 30 different metric sources that it calls scalers. This means it integrates natively with tools like RabbitMQ, Kafka, Postgres, you name it. It also supports scaling based on CPU and memory if you really, really want to use that. But I hope you don't. In order to work, Kada has created its own custom resource called a scaled object which you need to use instead of an HPA. Internally, Kada still creates and uses an HPA just like we discussed. Another cool thing about Kada is that you can auto-scale based on a cron schedule. In this example, I'm scaling up the replica count to 20 every Friday at 10 am for an hour. This way I can preemptively scale based on a fixed schedule or use an ML model to predict load and adjust accordingly. Another important scaler I would like to mention is the Prometheus scaler. As we saw in the previous video on service meshes, Prometheus has become the standard place for storing metrics when it comes to Kubernetes. With this scaler, all we need to do is write a single PromQL query and that's it. Having all these scalers by default is super awesome. But it doesn't end here. Kada provides a really easy to use interface to define your custom scalers to add support for tools it doesn't support natively. How cool is that? I can go on and on about Kada scalers for hours. But enough of me talking. The community has made some really good samples that you can try out for yourself. I'll put a link to it in the description below. I just couldn't find any downside of using Kada apart from one thing. The one thing Kera does not support is scaling down to zero based on the HTTP request rate. Can you guess why? Let me know in the comments below. Like I already said, I don't see why one wouldn't use Kera. Its non-intrusive nature allows us to start with auto-scaling based on traditional metrics like CPU and memory. We can then slowly migrate to more niche metrics once we are ready. One great metric you can choose to scale based on is the incoming request throughput. But the question one must ask is, how do you collect that metric in the first place? Well, check out this video to know more. Like, share and subscribe if you found this video to be helpful. And don't forget, I am your tech bard. You're on YouTube and hopefully in real life.